Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it's a very familiar audience, so that's a very comfortable feeling. Uh, today we'll be talking about financialization in Turkey. This panel is uh, organized by the Debt and Financialization Research Network Turkey, which is a recently founded uh, research collaboration network that focuses on issues of debt and financialization in Turkey. We're trying to eliminate different aspects of financialization in Turkey. And we are uh, happily supported by the Research Institute on Turkey. You can find more information about this uh, on defire.info. If you're interested, we'll be posting the video recordings of this as well as the audio recordings online and uh, most probably also the presentations uh, if all authors uh, agree to present, uh, to, uh, to publish with us. Uh, Adi Rizal Yigen, who is a <coughs> postdoc at Queen's University in, in Canada, and he'll be talking about financial inclusion in Turkey. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'll take my time, but uh, mine is largely descriptive. Uh, just I will try to clarify my position regarding financialization and financialization of the state at the beginning of the presentation and at the end. Uh, I hope to turn the paper into an article and uh, it will also form a basis for further research, I will, uh, if I can find the uh, funds, I will uh, try to analyze the impact of microcredits uh, in regional and local development in Black Sea region of Turkey, but it, it depends on how my studies develop. So this is uh, actually the outline of the paper as well. Uh, I will not uh, dwell on the uh, very much on microcredit, <coughs> but um, I will try to. I'm trying to drive from uh, previous studies and try to form a framework for analyzing financial inclusion. So I will um, rest on uh, the descri description and analysis of three pillars. Uh, which is the strategy formation uh, and financial sector development. The second one is financial literacy and education, and the third one is uh, microfinance or microcredit. Uh, so I will try to uh, talk about how these three pillars are uh, working right now in Turkey, and what is the role of the state. My major argumentation is uh, my major argument is that. Uh, we can take financial inclusion as, a, as an aspect of financialization and the specificity of the <coughs> Turkish case is that uh, the state has a proactive role uh, in all of these pillars but most notably in strategy formation and uh, microcredit sector. So I'm taking, I'm, I'm referring to uh, David McNally's definition of financialization. It's um, embedding labor capital and capital capital relations in interest paying financial transactions. So, um, and I believe that financial inclusion can be seen as an aspect of uh, financial relation in, the, in this regard. But when I, when I, um, when I, um, let's say, deep, try to deep, uh, try to dive deep in the literature, I, I saw that uh, those who relate financial inclusion with financialization mostly focus on microcredit and securitization of microcredit. Uh, but um, now the Turkish case differs from that, but still uh, I believe the road uh, and the trajectory shows that. Um, we, we, are, we are witnessing the increased integration of individuals and households into the financial sector uh, with the help of state policies, despite the state-organized microcredit sector and despite the non-commercialized uh, microcredit sector. So I will try to explain that as well. Um, 
Now, just, just to clarify before going on, uh, the, um, the most uh, quoted definition of financial inclusion is removing the barriers in front of access to formal finance, formal financial institutions. But World Bank, in a way, revised the uh, definition within years. So the last global financial index, in their glo last global financial index, which has been released in the last week or so, uh, they, um, they also emphasize the financial literacy and education uh, aspect. Um, access is not enough in their terms. Um, we, we also need to increase financial awareness, to use their terminology, so that people, uh, people use the services, people become a part of the financial system, let's say. Uh, and, I, and I also tried to um, differentiate in the paper with uh, through a kind of demarcation with democratization of finance and financial inclusion, which I, I see as the uh, democratization, democratization of finance as uh, the provision of costly financial services to low-income households, whereas financial inclusion can actually uh, include the infrastructural development let's say, financial, the development of the financial sector. Uh, and, and also the, the, um, the discourse revolving around this notion of financial inclusion has pretty much something to do with development uh, framework. And it's, it's like a remedy to offer to uh, global south uh, and by international financial institutions that claim if you, uh, if you develop the financial services, if you raise the financial awareness, if you literally educate the people, then, <coughs> then you will find the, uh, the funds thanks to the savings of the individual and the households. Um, so in the literature, you see that uh, um, when, when people talk about financialization, uh, with regards to financial inclusion, they pretty much talk about securitization of microcredit and the activities of for-profit microfinance institutions. Um, we know that this uh, resulted in uh, over-indebted households, as in the case of India, Andhra Pradesh, or, uh, um, or Bosnia Herzegovina, and it also led to uh, microfinance institutions' mat meltdowns. So I'm, uh, I'm trying, as I said, I'm trying to form a framework to analyze uh, financial inclusion. So I'm uh, modifying Michael Chiba's work, uh, uh, who states actually that countries learn from previous experiences, and we have hybrid models for financial inclusion. So in order to uh, relate this issue of financial inclusion with financialization, we need to take into consideration this hybridization. So I'm suggesting that we need to look at strategy formation, we need to look at financial literacy campaigns and the microcredit sector. So in Turkish case, uh, the policy document, which is actually, as confirmed by the Under Secretariat of Treasury, which is actually the financial inclusion strategy uh, has been promulgated, uh, has been uh, published in the official gazette last year, the strategy for financial access, financial education, the protection of financial consumers and action plans. When you, when you look at the document, uh, um, the strategy aims to address the gender gap in accessing financial services. It declares its aim as the protection of financial consumers and to increase financial awareness in collaboration with uh, non-governmental organizations and, uh, and commercial banks. However, I believe the strategy is protecting the financial sector as um, it does not question the provision of service, provision of financial services. It is explicitly stated in the strategy that uh, the banking sector in Turkey is developed. Uh, banking, sector, banking sector in Turkey has developed so much that there is no problem 
regarding the reach, regarding the supply of financial services. Well, the only problem is the uh, is the financial um, financially illiterate uh, individuals and the households that do not uh, know how to use the financial services. So that's why uh, the strategy focuses on financial literacy and education. And another critique that can be directed to the strategy is that the neglect of the, uh, the wage skews and the informal sector in Turkey. As you all know, almost 40% of the labor force uh, is working in informal sector, uh, which supports the informal financial mechanisms and informal credit mechanisms. Uh, there is no mentioning of this informal sector uh, in the document as well. Um, so, I, so I believe that this is an ex this is a this is an example of spa spatial displacement. What we are witnessing. I'm not referring to geographical displacement. I'm just refer referring to displacing the contradictions from the production of from the space of production, from the field of production, to another space, to the field of exchange. Um, so, uh, of course, there is the problem of uh, there is a problem uh, of um, you the credit use and knowledge about financial services in Turkey. Uh, the, the studies, the index, for example, Turkey uh, Economy Bankası publishes such indexes from 2013 onwards. <coughs> the index shows that uh, women, students, unemployed and those living in the countryside form the disadvantaged groups in terms of access to finance and the use of financial services. But the problem, in, uh, again, in, in these indexes, uh, and the strategy document is that uh, it's it's not the financial sector; it's the people. They do not assume investor positions. They do not assume saver positions. So the state, uh, there there are 55 action plans within the strategy. Uh, the state organizes uh, multi-actor cam campaigns to overcome this problem of financial literacy and uh, education. Um, from from 2010 and 2011 onwards, uh, you can we, you can see lots of campaigns. Uh, Minister, Ministry of Family and Social Policy, and recently Ministry of Education uh, is the prominent figures is the pro prominent ministries regarding these campaigns. Uh, however, again, uh, as the the financial capability survey and as the index um, composed by these financial institutions themselves show, um, it can be said the problem does not just reside on the individual and household side. 66% uh, of Turkish adults reported, according to this financial capability survey, uh, reported that they have run short of money in the past for necessary goods and food. And 92% of them stated that it was because of low income. So what we are witnessing that witnessing is that like neglecting this uh, issue of low income and neglecting this issue of informal uh, sector. The most interesting thing uh, in in this financial inclusion campaign uh, is is that. Uh, this strategy and does not talk about microcredit in Turkey. But we have such a uh, microcredit sector developing, uh, controlled by state, and also supported by the infamous Grameen Bank. Turkey uh, Israfı Önleme Vakfı and Grameen Bank collaborated in 2003 in Turkey Grameen Microcredit Program, and they, they together they have extended credit to 45,000 women and the credit volume has reached to uh, 140 million US dollars in the last decade. Uh, so you do not see 
this state-controlled microcredit sector within the strategy document, and it's a state-organized sector, but uh, as stated by the microcredit program, their official aim is to convert borrowers into investors and financial consumers. So they, they promote the women, uh, the borrowers, to have bank accounts. They, uh, pr they encourage them to become a financial consumer, to uh, benefit from retirement plans, and to have long-term savings. So I will, <clears throat> I will try to conclude uh, with emphasizing the proactive role of the state in terms of <coughs> financial inclusion. Uh, now, the financial inclusion itself has become a state policy and it has become a performance criteria for various ministries and uh, various uh, branches within the state. For example, this the drafting of financial inclusion strategy was the performance criteria for Under Secretariat of Treasury in their official strategy document. Um, so, this Financial Stability Committee, composed of the heads of Treasury, Central Bank, Banking Regulation and Supervision Agency, and all other stuff, all the other usual suspects, they, um, they drafted this strategy and they assume a proactive role for promoting financial inclusion. Um, another specificity is the state control of microcredit. There is a slim chance that the microcredit sector will be commercialized in the near future. Uh, but this does not mean that the borrowers uh, are not becoming financial consumers. And regarding the third pillar, the financial literacy and education, uh, it's the only pillar that state does not occupy the upper hand position. Uh, state collaborates with non-governmental organizations and commercial banks to organize uh, the financial literacy campaigns, but state has the uh, capacity to influence the agenda, as seen in family budgeting emphasis. So it's not the it's not women as a as an individual becoming a financial consumer, thanks to the contribution of the uh, Ministry of. Uh, family and social policy, it's always the family. It's always family and the household <coughs> becoming the financial consumer. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm trying to uh, deal with this notion of financial inclusion in Turkey uh, as an aspect of financialization, and I'm trying to show the proactive role of the state, and I'm, um, I'm I have emphasized in the paper, and I, I hope to do it so in the article that this is this is um, this is um, this is also an aspect of financialization of the state. Um, I refer to financialization of the state as um, as the depolitization of economic management and depolitization of uh, important decisions regarding. Uh, economic sector without any popular control and without any popular intervention and the use of strategies such as internationalization as seen in uh, taking uh, advice from international financial institutions modifying and ad adopting within the uh, national context so it's not a direct transmission but an adaptation uh, financial inclusion is is the motto of development community and it's, it's uh, it's like an enchanter's land for many, but it's not like one-to-one -one, uh, direct transmission from international financial institutions to the national context. It's, it's modification and adaptation, and it's done by the state. Uh, so uh, I, I have not gone into detail in the paper about pro progressive alternative to such kind of inclusion, uh, such kind of uh, financial inclusion campaigns. But I believe that it should be also our concern <coughs> to address the demand for credit uh, by uh, low-income households and working-class members. Uh, but we should do so 
in a way that uh, that promotes uh, progressive alternatives and public control and popular control on economic sectors and financial sector. Thank you.